the New York Rangers and their coach, Gerard Gallant, have agreed to part ways. Turk got the team to a 107-point regular season this year, but a first-round exit in the playoffs. Game 7 loss to the New Jersey Devils has spelled the end for Gallant, who, remember, took the Vegas Golden Knights in year one all the way to the Stanley Cup final. He's a Jack Adams winner. He's well-respected in the industry. It's two years. You see the Eastern Conference final and then the first round exit this year. It is a tough, tough business. We welcome in Elliot Friedman to talk about this breaking news. Our NHL Network insider, are you surprised? No, Tony, I, I don't think anybody's surprised. I think a lot of people saw this coming. Uh, there were some rumors about it during the season. I'd heard in, during the year that the Rangers had at least looked around about the possibility of if they made a coaching change, who would be available. I think Gallant was well aware that the ground underneath his feet uh, wasn't very safe. And even when he came out kind of swinging at the media the other day in the sense of he was prepared for the questions and said how disappointing they were, I think he still knew that this was a possibility. And I don't think anybody is overly surprised that we're kind of at this point today. And you mentioned some of the names that are out there. What are you hearing? Well, I, I think a lot of us, Tony, are kind of wondering about uh, Joel Quenville. And I, I, like right now, as I understand it, uh, Joel Quenville does not have, has not been officially reinstated. And I do think at some point in time he's going to meet with the NHL and talk about, you know, is this the right time to do it? Um, he did speak to the AHL coaches uh, earlier this, uh, I think it was about a month or two ago, about just some of the uh, courses he's taken and some of the things um, that he's done to work his way back. I know he's been in contact with Kim Davis from the NHL about coming back, but I think there there has to be a, a formal process here. And until um, you know we get a, any kind of ruling or clarity on Joel Quenville not being allowed to return, I think a lot of this search will be around his name. Understandable where he ranks all time and his strength of resume. Last thing for you, one of the things we heard was that the exit interviews played a role in this decision being made. What does that mean to you? Well, if you look at what happened in Calgary, Tony, there was a situation where I think Daryl Sutter was going to return as coach of the Flames next season. And then it became obvious that when the organization heard what the players had to say, things pivoted and it couldn't continue. I think the Flames realized it couldn't continue and even Sutter himself realized it couldn't continue. So I'm sure we'll get uh, some uh, clarity in the next couple of days about what was said about in terms of were there players, important players who felt there needed to be a change? Was that information taken to Gallant? And then he felt that it needed to be a change as well. But like I said, I, I think a lot of people believe that this was trending in this direction anyway. My guess is that the Rangers in, in the – uh, talks they had with the players after the season, they saw nothing that made them feel that they should change their minds. Elliot Friedman, as always, on top of it. Thanks so much. My pleasure, Tony. Have a great Saturday. Likewise. The magic of television, forced perspective. His hands aren't that big, but his guys <laughs> are. So I'm coming to Grimmer first. Grimmer, are you surprised or are you among the group that he talked about that saw this coming? Well, you know, given the way uh, this team exited the postseason, sorry, the postseason this year, uh, not terribly surprised. Add to that, Tony, the context. Uh, we are, as a sport, a rather knee-jerk organization, sorry, uh, institution around sure. the, the coaching position. It's a results-based uh, organization or institution. I don't have to tell the gentleman uh, to my left that. If you're not getting the results, um, you're certainly, you should consider yourself in the crosshairs. Mm -hmm. So, and, and add to that, in a marketplace um, under an ownership structure, that might be the most knee-jerkiest uh, of in the business so it's uh, you know with all that context uh, and then I think too the way this season finished up for the New York Rangers towards this was a group that yes they finished a few points behind Jersey in the standings but on paper you might have argued they're a little more dangerous up front have a better decor have better goaltending had more experience and had this group down by a score of two to nothing New Jersey in the series to have it reversed and you exit by game seven, um, I think the writing's kind of on the wall at that point. Would you agree? Well, I think they were 
a little disappointed as far as they went last year to this year. Yeah. Getting knocked out in the first round and uh, not really having a real strong game seven, which we noticed. But uh, for myself as a coach, you always think about where do they get the news on certain subjects. So that's what happened. EJ Raddick was talking about it on NHL Now this past week. Then they talked about maybe an exchange, the confrontation they had after game four at home. When you start to see stuff like that accumulate, then you have to start worrying like what's going on because too many people know what's going on. That locker room is a sanctuary. So yeah. nothing ever leaves the locker room. So it's, it's a tough situation on both ends and it depends on what the expectancy of the team was going to be that was asked of him coaching it this year. We don't know what that was. Add to this, Alaire, just if I may, uh, real quick. Of course. Um, we live and operate in a different uh, era today. When you and I played, uh, and even to some degree when you coached, it was an employer coach to employee player kind of a relationship. Today it's more a partnership. It's consensus. It's a solution based. You're you're building an alliance and allegiance with this younger player, and um, it, it's again more of a partnership. So. So the point I'm making is, of course, you're going to pay a lot more attention in an era like this to player feedback you get by way of the exit interviews. Not that that really cinched the deal, but maybe kind of confirmed this is the right direction, the right course to take. And whether it's Quenville or some other coach, this is a very attractive opening, and you know that there will be tremendous interest.